What is up, guys? It is Marcus from Perspective Sports, and I know I've been gone a while. I believe it's been two months since my last upload, and trust me, I have good reason. I am a college student, so and I also have a job. So I went to school, work, got home, homework, sleep, do it again. But now that that's over, the semester's over, finals are done, I'm able to you know spend more time on my YouTube channel, get back on the grind, and upload content consistently. And I also got to go to the PLL opening weekend. And if you haven't gone, well, it's only been one week, but I recommend you get out to one. And if you don't get out to one, I recommend you get it on NBC Gold. And this is not a paid sponsorship, but I'm saying what they've done with that broadcast is phenomenal. On-field player interviews, the graphics, the on-field player interviews is probably the coolest thing I've ever seen. You see the player on the field, they ask him a quick question, he gives you a live response. And it's like, yo, that's crazy. And I believe that every other league is going to take that and implement in some form of that into their own league, and the PLO will be the proud originator of that great thing. And so if you haven't got out to a PLL event, I strongly recommend you get out to one. I got to meet a lot of great people like Greg from East Coast of Dyes. Uh, I got to have a conversation with Mike Rabel, the CEO of the league, and Paul Rabel's brother. And that was a great talk. And as the official guys, I'm Team Archers, baby. And no, I'm not a bandwagon. I made the decision before the game started because they have a lot of Q's players. I'm a Q's fan. And so I got to stick with my boys. And so we did have a great first weekend. Two games went to overtime, and one game was really close. And we're going to get into that right now. And so without further ado, let's get into the recap and how this is going to work. We're going to break down the three games that happened. Then we're going to go into the power rankings and then the top five plays of the week. And so let's dive right into it. In the first game of the Premier Lacrosse League saw the Archers battling the Chrome, and this game saw the Archers win 13 to 12 in overtime. And you really couldn't ask for a better opening game. But first, we have to give our props to Stephen Kelly, the Archers face-off specialist, for scoring the first goal in league history. So shout out to Stephen Kelly. And this game saw the Archers win despite losing the ground ball battle by 10. The Chrome got off nine more shots and won eight more face-offs, and that's not something you see every day. And so you really have to give credit to the Archers team, but a lot of credit goes to that defense. And so when you see the Archers goalie, Adam Gettleman with 11 saves, Scott Ratliff and Mac Mahone, who combined for five of the team's eight calls turnovers, you really have to give them some credit because despite getting off 10 more shots, they made it difficult to get it on cage because they were in the Chrome offensive players. And when they got them on cage, Gettleman was there to make the save. And also the offense was clicking. Marcus Holman had... Five points, three goals, two assists, and Will the Man Manny going for four goals, including the game winner. As for the Chrome, you had Jordan Wolf, who had an amazing day setting his teammates up with four assists. Rookie Connor Farrell had, was an absolute monster at faceoff. He really left his mark on me. That guy is a beast. He's physical. He clamps the ball. He goes and gets it. And that's why you saw them with that eight plus faceoff win advantage. Ned Crotty, Justin Gutterding, and Jordan McIntosh combined for seven goals of their own, but they did come up short versus the Archers in overtime. The next game of the day was the Whip Snakes outlasting the Chaos 15 to 14 in overtime. This was the second game of the day in the second game to go to overtime. So you can see the league did an absolutely phenomenal job with balancing these rosters out. But the one thing that stood out to me early and often in this game was how aggressive the Whip Snakes defense is. They swarm the ground balls. They throw the hard checks. The D-mids will get into the chest of the offense. They're attack road. They're definitely one of my favorite teams to watch. But you do have to give credit to the chaos. Their defense ate a lot of shots for their goalie. But the Whip Snakes are, their intensity is something to be marveled at. That is a fun team to watch. And so... As far as the whip sticks, Matt Rambo had a great day with five points, three goals, two assists. Justin Gut Justin Henningberg, excuse me, and Ben Reeves combined for five goals of their own. Drew Snyder buried the game winner in overtime. And as for the chaos, they had Josh Bryan, Miles Jones, and Jake Ficaro combined for ten of their fourteen points. Blaze Reardon didn't necessarily have a great game. He struggled early. The Whip Snakes scored on six of their first 12 shots. The defense seemed to have a lot of miscommunications early, but they pulled it together as the game went on and forced overtime, but they did come up short on that Drew Snyder goal in overtime. And for the final game of the day, we have the Redwoods who defeated Atlas 11-9. 
And this was the only non-overtime game in league history. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. But this was a great matchup at the faceoff. It's the battle of the GOAT, Greg Gruelin, and the future Trevor Baptiste. And it lived up to the hype. Not a single player outside of Beast and Trevor Baptiste won a single faceoff all night. So that tells you just how dominant these two guys are. But as far as the Redwoods, they jumped out to an early 5-2 lead in the first quarter and it proved to be too much for the Atlas to overcome as the Atlas outscored the Redwoods 7-6 in the final three quarters but came up short. Eric Law, Chris Cloutier, and Ryan Brown all scored two goals for the Atlas. Joe Walter, Sergio Salcedo, and rookie Clark Peterson, who's looking like a steal, scored two goals each for the Redwoods. Both of these teams had a super balanced scoring attack, but the most noteworthy thing from this game were these two goalies who combined for 37 saves. These two guys were working all night long. And you have Tim Troutner, who had 17 saves. Jack Concanon, excuse me, had 20 saves of his own. These two guys were pretty busy all night, and they did not disappoint. These two guys are going to be anchors for their team's defenses. And now for the league power rankings after week one, and it looks something like this. Number one, I have the Archers. Yes, I put my bias aside when I placed the Archers number one in my power rankings. When you look at the Archers as a unit, they have an amazing offense led by Will Manning, Marcus Holman, Tommy Schreiber, and Kevin Rice. And then you have the defense that forced the second most turnovers of the week with eight. So it's hard for me to put any other team above them right now when they played such a complete game. Number two, we have the Whip Snakes, and I gave them a slight edge over the Redwoods because they're very similar teams. Solid goalie play, physical defenses, balanced scoring attacks, but the Whip Snakes intentionally really left an impression on me when their attack rides, they make clears difficult, when the short sticks minis will get in your chest, the slides are there. The Whip Snakes are a legit team, and you could make a case for them to be number one in the league, but I just can't put them over the Archers right now. Number three, we have the Redwoods, another complete team, balanced offense, great goalie play, defense that forced the second most turnovers of the week, tied at 11 with the Archers. They're a solid number three. Fourth, we're putting the Chrome. The Chrome put up a great fight, clawing back from a slow start that saw them in a 4-0 deficit. They forced overtime before Will, the man, Manny, hit the game winner. But the Chrome are a solid team with two very good face-off specialists and rookie Connor Farrell and veteran Drew Semino, who combined for 18 face-off wins. Coming in at 5, I placed the Chaos because that defense forced the league-high 11 turnovers, but it was a bad day from goalie Blaze Reardon, and overall, the team went to overtime despite Blaze struggling. And it was against a tough Whip Snakes team, so to not have Blaze playing at his best or playing probably one of the worst games he's ever played, and he's probably never going to play that bad again. I mean, it was just a rough day. I'm going to cut him some slack there. But to go to overtime with that Whip Snakes team, I can't put you but so low, and so I'm going to put them at five. Coming in at number six is Atlas, and this is where I believe they belong at the end of week one. Defense made a handful of mistakes, were bailed out by the excellent play of Jack and Cannon. The offense does, I will give them credit, seems more structured and set based than the most teams in the league, and it showed as two guys uh, had two, three guys had two goals. McArdale finished with three assists, but the defense does need a lot of improvement, and so I believe they're the sixth best team in the league after the first week and to end off the video we're gonna have my top five plays of the week and these are very difficult to compile so i would love if you guys help me out you guys can you know tag me in some highlights on twitter you, uh, the links in the description below let me know hey i think this belongs in the top five make my job just a little bit easier help me out here and there i may miss a couple of plays and so be sure to make sure to check out the top five i'm gonna sign off here and let you see the plays see you next week i'm out joel titty Splits through, gets the shot away. A big collision there. Knocks Tinney's helmet off as he found Garrett Apple waiting for him. Redwoods take it to the house and take the lead 8-7. Defense to offense. Fielder Brent Adams opportunistic. In and is shooting the ball today. And quickly in front and through the legs. Ty Thompson with his first. In transition. For Carl, loads up a two and scores! 
Jake for Caro cuts the whip's lead in half on attack. Burn. Are you kidding me? Donna, but are you kidding me? The double team, he swims through that, maybe pins this, his stick against his chest, I don't know. Gets his hands free and lets it go. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Oh, oh man, he scores! What a play from Marcus Holman. And that's all the space he needs. Look at that, oh my gosh, the, the skill he reached.